Next, we are going to study the reaction of pure free element with oxygen after we finish the chapter about periodicity. The reactivity decreases across the period in pure free, and you have learned already. Sodium is highest reactivity, aluminum is the lowest one. But for raw metal, the reactivity increases across the period. That means group 7 will be the highest reactivity. And the reason behind is because metal, when they move across a period, the difficulty in losing the outermost shell electrons will be also increased. For example, sodium only needs to lose one electron, but aluminum needs to lose three. So sodium can finish the task easily, right? For the raw metal part, it's opposite. Corwin only needs to receive one electron to form octet structure. Compared with the one in phosphorus, you need to receive three. So chlorine will be more reactive because they can achieve the octet structure easier. And here shows the reaction of the metallic elements in period three with oxygen. First of all, sodium. I know you have learned the equation already. Now this time only memorize the observations. Sodium will give golden yellow film and the uh, Magnesium will form white DC film. How about the non metal part? Silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. And here shows the equation. All of them become oxide. Silicon become silicon dioxide. Phosphorus become P4O10. Sulfur become SO2. Under suitable catalyst V2O5, they can form SO3, sulfur trioxide. And chlorine and argon do not with oxygen directly. So you can see, for the non-metal part, the element will achieve its highest oxidation number often. For example, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur, they can obtain their highest oxidation number easily. For the final part in this chapter is the properties of oxide in purified elements. So here, once again, I highlight the periodic table with different colors to let you know the bonding and structure of different Oxides, metallic oxide is metallic structure. Silicon dioxide is joint covalent structure. The other non metal oxide, they are simple molecular structure. The metal oxide usually shows basic or amphoteric characteristics. Now, before we go to further discussion on this topic, students should understand how can we compare or predict the properties of oxide. Most of you may think that try to dissolve the metal oxide into water, then, then try to measure the pH value to see if they get the basic properties. But this is not correct because most metal oxide do not dissolve in water, and that means we can not measure the change in pH value. The correct method should be the metal oxide dissolve in acid but not water. Because if the pH meter shows increase in the pH value of the acid, then we can conclude that the metal oxide shows basic properties. And here shows sodium oxide react to form sodium chloride. Magnesium oxide react with HCl to form magnesium chloride and aluminium oxide react to form aluminium chloride. But students should pay attention. Aluminium oxide is a very special case because they can react with hydroxide solution at the same time to form compact salt. This equation you have learned in the chapter acid and base when you learn that the aluminium hydroxide will re-dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide solution. And here we have a special term, amphoteric. That means it can behave as an acid and a base. Or you can say they have reaction with both acid and alkaline. For the non-metal oxide, they will show neutral or acidic properties. Here shows, and everyone should memorize the equation. Here shows a very special example, the silicon dioxide. They should react with hot sodium hydroxide to have reaction. And once again, they show their acidic properties because they can react with alkaline with dropping in pH value. And this is the end of this section.